Hi guys, in this video, we'll continue working on our routes.go file. So in your enable router, what you want to do is you want to say r.router.use and you want to use your middleware.logger basically. So your chi router gives you a logger and that's what you want to use in your enable logger function. And you want to return r, the router, all right? Enable timeout. For enable router logger, what you want to do is you want to say r and router because this is a struct method again. It doesn't take in anything, but it's a struct method nevertheless, all right? And here, again, you want to say r star router and your enable timeout function again returns a router. Your enable cores returns a router okay, and it's again a struct method enable recover also as a struct method and returns router enable request ID also a similar setup And enable real IP, same as well. It's a struct method that returns a router. And the inner definitions of these functions will also be very similar. So here you're using the logger, and in enable timeout, you'll use r.router.use middleware dot timeout function, in which you'll pass r.config dot get timeout function. In enable cores also you'll use r.router.use r.config dot cores and you'll return r and enable recover you'll say r.router.use middleware dot recoverer enables request id You'll say r dot router dot use middleware dot request id and from both of these functions we are supposed to return r. So firstly, the spelling of return r is different, wrong here. Here also you'll return r, return r, return r from this function as well. From here also you'll return r. And here you'll say r dot router dot use middleware dot real IP return r and the response dot go you'll say for new response you'll pass a data which has interface and status is int. And what you want to return here is response. And result. So just to explain to you, uh, response is the struct that we have defined. And this is the type of response uh, in this format that we'll be sending from this program always. To create a new response, we'll have to call this new response function, which will take in some data and it'll take a status, like status is basically int, like 200, 500. And those we have already defined here, 200, 400, 404, right? We'll define all these here. So whenever you're turning a response uh, from this new response function, you will have a status and a result, again, which is, you know, of the type struct, which is, you know, compliant with our struct that we have defined. So for the status, the value is status that we've received here. And for the result, the data is an interface, uh, the data that's Pass here and we create the whole response which is of this struct type and it's sent back from this new response function. So whenever you want to send response from this uh, entire program, you're basically using the new response function to send it, right? And this basically function returns a response. Makes sense? And here, um, what we'll say is first we'll work on our send response function. Okay, so send response function, you'll say header dot set content 
dash type. So right now, all that we're doing is we're laying the foundation for our entire project. So we are creating the routes, we're creating the config, we're creating the response, uh, all the ut utilities like response, environment, logger, all of these different things. And now we're just creating how the response is sent to the front end. So you set your content type, you set your access control, allow origin kind of things to handle the course errors. And then you'll write header, which will be basically the status. And you'll send response.bytes. So two values are received from this function and we'll mark both of them as blank characters because we won't use them. And what you want to print out is response.string. Now response.status, response.bytes and response.string um, are, so bytes and string are these two functions, right? So whenever you want to access um, a struct method, right? So this is a struct method, this is a struct, these are the two struct methods for those for that struct. And whenever you want to uh, use a struct method, you use it like this, response.status, because response is the struct that we're creating uh, for the struct method, okay? So that's how you use it, response.bytes, response.string. So these two are the functions. And what do these two functions do? Not much, they just, Marshal it, so they say, marshal the data. So you'll marshal the response here, and you'll get that in a variable called data. And this function just returns data. And string just returns whatever it received and converted to string. Okay. And now we'll just define all the uh, status errors. So, sorry, status no content content is going to be 204 and we'll have status okay, which will be, sorry, S is capital and the rest is small and okay is again uh, large gaps. Okay, now we'll start defining all these functions. So I'm running a little short on time, so I'll have to continue this in the next video, really sorry for that. And we'll just complete these, all these functions really quickly in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching. Do subscribe to the channel so that you can know when the next video of the series comes out. And see you in the next episode. Thank you, bye.